Hello everyone and welcome to this episode of OVPLT Talks. And I'm joined today by David Morn, who is Head of General Academic Programs and Senior University Language Teacher in the Language Centre. And David, uh, would you like to tell us a little bit about yourself? How did you come to UCC? Oh, thanks very much. Well, I'm from Tipperary originally and I did my undergrad here in UCC in English and History and then went on to do my Master's, fantastic Master's programme um, in English Modernities from Romanticism to Postmodernism with Graham Allen as my tutor supervisor, and that was fantastic. I really, really loved it, and it's something I still, all these years later, draw, draw back on. Then I said I'd go teaching English for a year as a career break, and stumbled into a job I actually love, and found myself working in the private sector for many years, and then joined UCC a couple of years ago here. So it's Very great. good. And can you tell us a little bit about the approaches to teaching and learning in the Language Centre? Can of course, yeah. I would say at Language Centre, it's fair to say we take a broadly student-centred approach, where we view ourselves not so much as st um, sages on the stage, but guides on the side, where as well as presenting language and teaching students the skills need to deconstruct the text, we set them up on an activity, give them the opportunity to independently apply what they've learned, sit back, observe, give them feedback. And I suppose that's really where the teaching and learning experience in language teaching comes in, in order to judiciously give the students the feedback that will help them to progress and develop further. That's very good. And what uh, is the approach to learning objectives and assessment in the Language Centre? Well, as an English language education provider um, and under QQI, all centres follow the Common European Framework of Reference, which is a okay. fantastic document that was devised by the Council of Europe back in the 1980s. It's been updated several times since. And it's a really, really in-depth, action-oriented way of describing competence at different levels for any language. So it really describes what somebody at B1 Intermediate could do if they were writing an essay, or if someone at C2 Advanced could do um, in terms of the detail that could go into. So it really helps us to plan our lessons, assess the students, and give them feedback, again, in incremental stages to progress. And an interesting development in the CFR recently was the concept of mediation in one of the newer editions, okay. which is an exciting development that we're exploring how to apply to potentially evaluating academic discourse and academic skills. So mediation in the CFR covers ideas like note-taking from a lecture, mediating a text, taking on different roles in collaborative work, or explaining a, con a complex or technical concept for a different audience, for a public audience, and so on. So we're really looking at embedding that within the curriculum. Now, we do find the CFR is great in terms of planning, but we find sometimes the language can be quite technical from a student's perspective. So we take a visible learning approach where we adapt our learning objectives to make sure that the students are really involved in understanding and that there's a shared language to talk about what learning is taking place. And they can really, by taking control of and understanding what they're doing, they can really apply it to their own mm. academic disciplines. Yeah. And language centers, of course, can play a hugely important role in mm. UCC's global adventures over mm. the next number of years. But could you maybe describe an example of what you said there earlier in practice and uh, with international students in UCC? Yeah, I think, well, recently we've had a, what we say is, we think is a very exciting and successful example of a collaboration between us and the BSc and MSc in nursing, where my colleagues, Julie Butters, and Claire Maloney were working with the students there. Many of the international students were reporting that they felt they weren't prepared to deal with the kind of complex mm. tasks and texts that they had as part of their discipline. So Julie and Claire, uh, in collaboration with the nursing department, were able to give them past papers and past examples and really looking at the rubrics and helping the students to deconstruct the language in the rubric, but also deconstruct the language in the essays that were given certain marks and their own language use and learning how they could, that they were able to do it and just to use it more flexibly and really see how they could progress. Mm, yeah. And there was fantastic feedback on it um, from the participants. We're very happy to say that's what the proof is in the pudding. <laughs> uh, we're able to report increased grades. The students got with the number of firsts increasing from 5 yeah. to 20%. Two ones went from 8% to 53 and fails went from 25 down to 10%. Mm, it's so really it's good, yeah. success. English language skills are often the, the limiting factor for many of our international Absolutely. students. Yeah. So David, thank you very much and very best welcome. wishes to the future. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.